Lesson 309, Side Splitting Theorem. Please remember to give me your course and section number with all communication. You can find this in the upper right hand corner of your Geometry LMS. The objectives of this lesson is to prove the side splitting theorem and to use the side splitting theorem to solve problems. If you'll remember, we learned about some properties earlier and we talked about the means and extreme property and that's the one we use where we cross multiply and divide. Well, in this lesson, we're going to use the add one property and it states that if you add one to each side of the proportion, then the proportion will still be true. Just as long as you add it to both sides, okay, you can't just add it to one side. And there's the polygon similarity postulate that we learned about and it states that polygons are similar if all their corresponding angles are congruent and all their corresponding sides are proportional. And in this drawing you can see that the angles are congruent and I'm getting my pen here so I can write on this. I'm going to stick with red for right now since I'm drawing on the picture and it says that all the sides are proportional. Well, we don't have a way to mark that. We'd actually have to work out the problem, but you can see that this side is proportional to this side. You can see that EF is proportional to JK, because look, if we took 2 divided by 4, that's going to equal 1 half. We can see that um, I'm going to draw a triangle on FG and KL and I usually don't do well dividing fractions but this one's pretty easy. If we reduce that we get one half and then lastly hmm, what can I draw here? My brain just went dead. Let's draw a square on HG and ML and you can tell on that one as well if I was to reduce it 1.2 over 2.4 it reduces to 1 half that same is going to go with 3.16 over 632 that is also going to reduce to 1 half so you can see that all of those sides are proportional there okay another thing that you learned last semester Okay, those, you're going to have to dredge up some old memories. If two parallel lines are intersected by transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. And you can see these little red arrows. Those tell me that M and N are parallel to each other. Okay, little arrows like that on the lines are telling you they're parallel. T is my transversal. I can't seem to get my writing down today. It keeps being crooked and everything. Okay, and then remember what corresponding is. That means you're in the same seat but at different tables. Okay, um, that your chair is in the same position at the table as a chair at another table. Let me, th okay, so look, angle one, and they've color coded these for you is corresponding with angle 5. And what's nice about doing these corresponding angles is that tells us that those angles are congruent. And look here, angle 4, they're both green, is corresponding with angle 8 and those guys are going to be congruent. Okay? And 3 and 7 is corresponding, they're congruent. 2 and 6 are corresponding, and they're congruent. So, uh, you've got to remember um, that postulate. Okay, now we're going to look at some GeoGebra. And let me, well, I forgot I can't do it with my pen. I'm going to pull this over so we can look at it and let me pull up my oh that's the wrong one let me pull up the other one got them right here it has a list of questions and I want to be sure I ask the questions correctly 
Okay. I've already uh, set up most of this, but let's let's look at this. I've checked the segment DE box. See if I uncheck it, it's just a regular old triangle sitting there. I can move the points around, looking really cool. Okay. Now watch this. If I check segment DE, poof, there's there's DE right there. And what's neat about GeoGebra is I can add DE and look what it does with these segments. It tells me what the segments e equal. So segment EA is 2.2, segment EB is 2.83, segment DA is 2.36, CD is 3.03. .03. Now look what they've done up here. Let me see if I can move this over just a little bit so we can see everything. Right here they've written um, or they've recorded, hold on, I'm looking, oh, what AE is, well, they called it EA over here, and on the spreadsheet they called it AE. They tell us that AE is 2.2, and that EB is 2.83. I can change that. Maybe not. Let me change that. I like that better. It makes it less confusing. I didn't do this spreadsheet or it would have had oh no 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 that didn't work did it I guess I can't fix it doggone it oh well we'll just have to deal with the letters being backwards then on uh, row 4 here it says A divided by BE look when you took AE 2.2 and divided it by BE which is 2.83 your proportion equals 0.78 Now then, whoa, it undid the segment. There we go. All right, and DA or AD is 2.36. See how they wrote that up here, 2.36. CD is 3.03, .03, and when I divide those two guys, I get 0.78. All right, and so I'm looking to see, okay, we've already done the calculations. All right, let's uncheck that. Now watch this, segment FG. Uh-oh, it's not paralleled to BC like DE was. All right, and look how they've recorded all these measurements over here. GA is 3.1, uh, BG is 1.92. When you divide those, you get 1.62. Look over here, FA is 2.9, 2.29. CF is 3.09 and when you divide those two guys you get 0.74. Okay, now then, if I'm looking at these two segments, there's GF and there's DE, I got them both checked. Look at that. Which one of those segments divides segment BA, oh, which is right here, let me let me uncheck them. Which one of those segments divides BA right there I'm pointing to it right there and CA which is right here into equal ratios. Well if you look over here at what we did this is DE up here segment DE. This is segment FG down here. Well we want them to have equal ratios so it looks like DE is with the winner there. All right, so our equal ratios are 0.78. Now then, um, what is the relationship between segment DE and BC? Well, it looks like to me, those two guys are parallel. Look here, I can move it. See how I'm changing the sizes of the segments? But look at the ratios over in the spreadsheet. They're staying the same, 2.88. Let me move this guy up here, way up here. He's still paralleled BC, but look at my ratios. They're still uh, equal. And you can even do it by changing your triangle. Looky there. Look, my ratios are still equal. And I've, and I've made my triangle way different sizes and looks. Okay, now then. Which segment divides two sides of the triangle into unequal ratios 
and that would be segment FG. And the relationship to this segment to the, sa to the side is they're non-parallel. Okay? They're never, ratios will never be equal if it's not parallel. So what do we call an equation that states two ratios are equal? Like, let's look again at segment DE. Look up here. It created equal ratios. And what do we call that equation? Got to remember, we call that a proportion. Okay, and we've worked with those a lot. Now, what we want to do now is think up a conjecture. Remember, that's an idea that is based on what we've just learned. The conjecture should be about relationships that develop when a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides of the triangle. Well, remember, if we're thinking about a conjecture and it's just an idea, let's... um. Let's think about this. We're going to say what we just learned is if a segment is parallel to a side of a triangle. And remember, this is a conjecture. I'm not coming up with any fancy words except for conjecture. If, if a segment is parallel to the side of a triangle, then the, oops, Oh, proportion, wait, then the segments created by the parallel segment are proportional. Oh, proportional. Now, Let me see if I can neaten this up a little bit so we can actually read it. All right, that's our conjecture. And I've probably, I didn't, I just pulled that out of my brain, okay? If a segment is parallel to a side of a triangle, the segments relate the segments created, that should be a a C in there, created. I thought it was supposed to be related, and I'm like, what? What is that? Oh, created by the parallel segment are proportional. So what I'm trying the conjecture I was trying to come up with is that since D E is parallel to B C, then these segments that were created by D E which would be EA, EB, DA, and CD are going to be proportional now. And we saw that over here in our calculations. This is what's neat about GeoGebra because you can play around and figure all this out really quick without having to draw and redraw and figure out things over and over again. Okay, well what we did was we just come up with a, a conjecture and we're going to have to prove it. And you're going to thank me that you're not really having to do proofs in your lessons. But we do need to go through a proof right now so that way we can understand the side splitting theorem more clearly. And here, here's our conjecture that CD is parallel to AB. And if you look over here I've got, well, let me get my pointer because um, we can see it better. Okay, so here's line CD parallel with AB. Remember I told you the two triangles on there? Those are, are arrows. Those are telling me that CD and AB are parallel. Now, we haven't looked at proofs any this semester, and I don't know why. I'm sure they've been there. But I really needed the proof to show you this one. Whenever we're writing a proof, you got to remember from last semester um, that you always start out with your given statement. CD is parallel to AB, and that was given to us up here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to add to this, my next row, 
and I've color coded for a reason and you're going to see that reason in just a moment is that I know just by what I've talked about today and what I learned last semester that CD is parallel to AB then angle ECD this angle right here oh and I like to mark things up as I, as I figure them out that ECD is going to be congruent to EAB and oh my goodness I didn't change those I copied and pasted and didn't make any changes shame on me let's say EDC that means all of those are wrong you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute EDC is congruent to EBA let me come up here and I'm going to mark up my now then the reason that I know this well let me go with the next step in my proof I put if CD is parallel to AB see how I got that up here from statement one your ifs always come from previous statements then ECD and remember I've, I kind of wrote this wrong this should be EAB this should be EBA so let me change these over here EBA this right here should be EAB okay and your thens always are developed from your current statement so your ifs come from previous statements your thens come from your current statement so I'm looking at this I'm saying well if CD is parallel to AB then I know that angle ECD is congruent to angle EAB and I know that EDC is congruent to EBA but how do I know that well if I was to come up here and extend these lines remember they're parallel I'm extending CD and EB and I'm going to extend EA here a little bit now I can see that I'm dealing with corresponding angles remember they're in the same position at a different table actually these angles are in the same position but at a different intersection so that makes them congruent and I know that because of the postulate I just reminded you of and you learned last semester the corresponding angles postulate now the next discovery I can make here is that triangle AEB is similar to triangle CED well let, let's identify those EAB here's EAB that's the big triangle okay I can come down here I can change my ink color let's say to this blue then E I'll draw it right next to there ECD I can say that those triangles are similar because of the angle angle similarity postulate because look here E is congruent to itself C is congruent to A down here and D is congruent to B so since all three of those angles are congruent in each triangle then I can say that they're similar because of the angle angle similarity postulate look what my if then statement looks like here I say well if all these guys up in statement 2 are congruent to each other then that means the triangles are similar and I know that because of the angle angle similarity postulate okay the next thing that I'm going to discover is that AE is AE over CE is proportional to BE over DE let's mark those so we can see AE oh that's the long one uh, let's do it like this I'm going to put the tick marks there we know that AE is proportional to CE and we know that DE is proportional 
uh, to BE. I guess I'll put 4 there. Okay, so those sides are proportional. Now watch my if-then statement. Remember, I, my if is statement 3, my then is going to be statement 4. There we go. Well, just because the triangles are similar, then we know that the sides are proportional. Well, where the heck did we get that idea? Well, let's look. Polygon similarity postulate. See, there was a reason I was telling you about those uh, postulates and properties from previous lessons, because I knew we were going to need them to prove this theorem. The next idea that I'm coming up with is that AE plus AC plus equals AC plus CE. So we're coming up here and we're saying, okay, A to E equals this little portion, AC segment plus segment CE. Well, that's kind of a duh. And it works for the other side too, that BE equals uh, BD plus DE. And if you'll remember from last semester, why did we didn't review this one, but if you'll remember from last, sem last semester, that's going to be the segment addition postulate. And that's what the if then looks like. There's my segment addition postulate. Okay, we got two more little ideas we're going to come up with here. The next one, oh, look at this proportion. AC plus CE over CE. AC plus CE over CE. Now, if you look, AC plus CE is going to equal AE, which is right up here. Let me get my pen and write this, if I can find my pen. AE, look right here. And we even stated it right here in number five. And the same is going to work for BD plus DE is going to equal this right here. I tried to make that arrow go all the way around, it didn't. And we even stated that up here in number five. So look at this if then statement. Because and all I did there was substitute AC plus CE in for AE. That's all I did. So look at my if then statement. And then here's my reason for it. Like I said, substitution. I use steps four and five to create the fractions that you see in step six. So that should be plenty of information for me to say that AC over CE equals BD over DE. And the reason for that is the converse of the add one property of proportion. Okay, if you add something to both sides, you're going to still end up with them being equal. And we added things to both sides in steps four and five and six. And that's what the final proof would look like. Thank goodness we don't have to do those in class. Okay, so here's the side splitting theorem. That's what we just proved. It says a line parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. So what they're telling us here, you can see with the, blue, with the red arrows that CD is parallel to AB and then they're telling us that AC is proportional to, I don't know if I can draw this sideways, <laughs> to CE, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention to my, to what I was supposed to be writing here. Let me go back, let me go back and fix that. AC is proportional. Now I can't find my pen. Nope, oh, there it is. And BD, I'm going to put a square there, is proportional to DE. That's what it's telling us. That's what the side splitting theorem says. So based on that, let's work some problems here. Let me change the color of my ink so I can work on this black background. 
It says write a proportion that relates JM, KN, ML, and NL by the side splitting theorem. So I'm looking to see what all I know based on what I've just learned and I changed my ink color and now I can't use it. Based on what I just learned, I know that JM is proportional to LM. I know that KN is proportional to NL. And let me tell you, these circles and squares that I'm drawing, drawing to show the corresponding segments, that's not official math stuff. That's just me trying to help you see what's going on. Okay, so if I'm going to write a proportion, this is the way I might write it because there's more than one way to skin this cat. And equals KN over NL. Now notice the way I wrote this. I put, let's just large segment over small segment equals large segment over small segment. Your fraction has to be corresponding as well. Okay. Another way that I could have written this is let's say JL is proportional to ML and let me make sure I'm writing it the same way. KL is proportional to NL. So those are just two ways you can write it. But what you have to make sure, there again, notice I put the the long large segment in the numerator and I put a portion of that segment in the numerator. So it's always got to be corresponding. And this was how they put it in the key. Okay, use the side splitting theorem to solve for x. Now this is when it gets fun. Okay, it's when we start doing some math. And I know y'all are going, oh, Miss Poor, that is so not true. Okay, it says use the side splitting theorem to solve for x, and right here is x. Okay, so this is the way I'm going to solve this. I'm going to put eg over gf equals, now remember, since I, sh since I chose uh, eg, for the numerator, I put N for numerator, that means I have to use DH in the numerator. Since I use GF for the denominator, I've got to use HF for the uh, denominator as well. I thought I used the wrong words there, but I didn't. DF over HF. So now, that's how I set up my proportion. I always like to do this step first because it helps me do my substitution correctly. And when I say substitute, I'm going to put the numbers in for the segments. So EG equals 6, GF equals 18, um, I did that, I did that kind of wrong. I mean, I did it correctly, I just, EG over GF, this one right here is the one I did wrong. That's why I was saying there's so many different ways to write it, you've got to be careful. See, I did everything correctly, I just wrote the wrong letters up there. Okay, so now my DH is going to equal 8, my HF is going to be x. And remember, cross multiply and divide. I'm going to cross multiply. 6 times x is 6x. 18 times 8. Whoo, got to get the calculator for that one. Oh, that's going to give me 144. Now remember, you got to get x all by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So 144 divided by 6 is going to give me x equals 24. There we go.
we solved for x. And then on this next slide, the answer. Yay! Now let's see if they set it up the same way I did. 6 over 18. Yep, we set it up the same way. I was hoping I had set it up different than they did. Okay, we're still solving for x. Oh, look right here. Let's, let's use this. Let's say, add this question. What is measure of segment W, U? After we get finished solving for x, we'll figure that one out. Okay, look here. I'm going to put these guys in my numerator. And I, see, I like to mark up my picture so I know this helps me keep things organized. So my numerator, I'm going to have VS over TV. And then over here in my numerator, look at me, I'm writing it correctly this time. Look right there. That's how I'm going to set it up. So now I'm going to substitute in my numbers. 6 over 14, VS is 6, TV is nice to watch sometimes. Uh, it's 14, and WU is X minus 4, and TW is 21. So remember, cross multiply. So let's do some cross multiplying. I got 21 times 6 is 126. And then I've got 14, and I'm going to have to multiply that by the difference of x and 4. So I'm going to bring this down. Now remember, whenever you have parentheses, that's distribution. I'm going to have to multiply this 14 by everybody in the parentheses. So that's 14x. Let me do 14 times 4 in my calculator. That equals 56. Now I get to add 56 to both sides. So I get 126 plus 56. That gives me 182. And then I get to divide both sides by 14. Oh, look at me including that x. That x shouldn't be there. You know what? I've never really had a problem with that until this school year. So 182 divided by 14 equals 13. So 13 equals x. Now, they told me to solve for x, so that's really all I needed to do, but I add this question. What is the measure of segment wu? So wu equals x minus 4. I plug 13 in for x. I believe that comes up to be 9. So let's check our work and see if that was right. I got 6 over 14 equals 9 over 21. Well, 6 times 21 gives me 126. 9 times 14, let me put that in my calculator. Let's hope it's right. Whoa! Yes, it is! 126. So it worked! I did my math right! Now let's see what they used. Oh, they did it the same again! I just copy and paste these answers in here. I don't work through the problems. And I can't believe I've done two of them exactly the way they did. Okay, here's another one. I'm doing a lot of these examples because last year I had a lot of students not get this. All it is is proportion, so don't let it confuse you. You just got to remember how to set them up correctly. Look, I'm going to set these guys up in my numerator. I'm going to set these guys up in my denominator. So I'm going to have EG over GF equals DH over HF. Hey, this looks like the same letters we had in another problem. So EG is going to be X. GF is 22. They keep using big numbers I can't do in my head. DH equals 12. HF is 24. So I'm going to cross multiply. X times 24 
gives me 24x and then 22 times 12 is 264. I divide both sides by 24 so I get x equals 264 divided by 24 equals 11. So EG up here equals 11 and remember if I want to check my work to make sure I did this correctly this is all I got to do. Cross multiply 11 times 24 equals 264 then I cross multiply 22 times 12 is also 264 so my check worked there we go x equals 11 okay just to summarize says according to the side splitting theorem a line parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally uh, please go through the LMS there might be some extra material in there I didn't include uh, read the lesson in the reference guide work 1 through 9 odd and contact me or attend TOGA after you've worked those problems before you complete the 3.09 quiz and only if you have questions okay if you don't have questions and you think you've mastered proportions in the side splitting theorem you go right ahead and take that quiz Anyway, that's going to be it for Lesson 3.09. Thanks for listening.